going over some of the basic navigation in RS2. Here to the left side navigation, you'll have the main tab, the hardware tab, that you all your individual controllers. Configuration, you'll have access levels, your access level groups, intervals, time zones, holidays, any users that will be logging into the software. You also have a map designer and uh, reporting if you're trying to do an export of a lot of different users that may have been expired and things like that. But we can drop down into each one of those later on. Your main server, the workstations, and conveniently, uh, alarms pops up. That is in your main section. This is your alarms. You can navigate through different tabs that are open. And if you don't see this on your software, what you can do is go to File, go to Options, and this is the Advanced Window Control option that you want to have selected and it will ask you to close the software out and uh, open it back up to be able to take those changes otherwise you won't see these tabs so we'll cancel that in card holders you have the top section which are your uh, people's names and below are the associated cards that are put onto each of these people. So a single person could have multiple cards. You can also search by different criteria, such as the information from the individual person, their embossed number, uh, their card number uh, right here, the department or last name. Type here, so for me, type my last name, going into my card, the access levels that are associated with my user, or the individual NDE locks or LE locks. Um, that are more wireless locks may be a little easier to understand that are associated with the uh, with the site. So we'll close out of that. You can navigate by individual cards. Notice that whenever I first select this, you don't see anything. That does not mean that your cards are gone. There's a little quirk with RS2 that if you press the uh, um, the magnifying glass here, it will pop open all of your cards. And I honestly prefer this layout a little bit more because I'll typically be navigating through the card numbers that are coming through this event screen that you see right here. You'll notice doors opening and closing. The actual location uh, being the reader name or, uh, or the output. Going to macros, you'll typically see it pop up as a list here. You can filter these columns alphabetically by clicking on the, the top uh, the top row here and click until it goes blank that way it just goes to the default state going into alarms you could purge all your alarms or there is a there's also another function in RS2 uh, that you when you first load the software to a new computer. You want to go into the enunciation sound here 
So you'll right click on any of these, it doesn't matter which one, but you'll see enunciation sound. Select that to none. That way you can get rid of that uh, pinging noise that happens with this uh, red light that's indicating down here for your alarms. <laughs> so another way to get to your alarms there is if you click on this bar, it'll open up. You can purge these alarms, say okay. You won't typically be going into many other ones other than the maps section. You can go into your maps, select which map. Scrolling the wheel will zoom you in and out. And it's contextual on where your mouse is, is where it will start to zoom in. Or you can use the scroll bar down here. You can select a door, whether you want to open it or um, do a command directly on that door. So if we wanted to grant access to somebody or set the reader into an unlocked state. We go to hardware. Hardware has all of your controllers, so collapsing that down, these are the individual network connections that you have for per reader, I'm sorry, per uh, controller, and also shows you the comm status of each one, or whether there's a power failure or a um, uh, there's a tamper switch alarm. We're still in the middle of installation, so you'll see a little bit of color going on here, which is which will be fine. But in their normal state, you'll see that these will be whited out. It'll be normal, normal encrypted, and uh, either not applicable, or it will say normal here. Something you would probably use more often than not are the individual readers per opening. You can search by typing in the first few letters. Unfortunately, you can't search by uh, context throughout. So for example, if we did public safety here, if I tried to type in safety, that won't pop up. So just try to keep in mind what what are the first letters of your building, and that should narrow help narrow down which reader you want to open up. It'll show the reader mode for each of those, whether they're unknown saying that there's a there's a connection issue or if there's a uh, reader uh, issue you could also step through your installed outputs if you wanted to trigger an individual output that was tied to something specific like a um, maglock for instance that does not have a card reader and public safety glass door is one of those that has a mag lock currently in an active state, meaning that it is unlocked. That's essentially it for hardware, other than maybe needing to um, reset a controller temporarily. You can right click on a controller and request the status or reset the controller. That way you can just kind of do a soft reset. We'll go down to configuration. You have card groups and this is dependent on sites on how your organization really wants to uh, group people's cards. but you'll definitely use the access levels 
which can be tied to individual openings or to groups of openings. For example, Art Center having three openings of these main entries that could be tied with the same uh, time zone here. You could have access level groups, which are groups of the access levels. So where access levels, you will pull in multiple, you're pulling in multiple readers that are in this list over here that are assigned to it, the assigned section. You can take access level groups going in and assigning multiple access levels into that same group. Effectively just narrowing down per user, uh, making it a little bit simpler for how many uh, access levels that person will have assigned to them. You have intervals, which are your individual times that you're creating. And then your time zones is where you will pull in different intervals to create a, uh, a section of time that you want a reader to operate or a holiday to be active and things like that. Holidays, of course, allowing your readers to be put into a lock state during uh, during people's time off. You have a users section. These are the individual people that can log into the system and whether they need to be uh, whether they need to log in for their first time or not. You have the reports. You could go in and generate a particular report. Say it was for just card listings. Or, uh, well, in this, maybe you just uh, makes the most sense card holder access events could go in say next set your a certain range that you want whether it's by week or hour or very specific time just say today say all or you can specify a specific uh, range of criteria that you could step through close that out for now we'll go into more detail later if a map designer that you could drag in JPEG files say test you can drag in pictures say this is a I just have a group of um, pictures here that I can just quickly drag in as an example you can drag these pictures wherever you want to so you have a controller or an individual reader. You can drag a reader onto the spot, put it at a particular opening. Say it was um, really wherever. Say this was an opening here. And just drop it there and uh, later on in the main menu, you'll be able to use your uh, use your readers here instead of having to go into the individual hardware. So, no on that. You could email people. There's your data exchange package. A lot of automation can be done from, from this screen as far as importing, exporting. Uh, users or um, uh, sorry uh, card holders as well probably make the most sense
as well as uh, access levels and several, several other things. This is definitely a more advanced tool and would probably be uh, done by your, uh, your access control dealer. Your alarm and events filter. Stepping down into system, you can go to your the name of your server and any uh, necessary information that you need in there. Your workstations. These are so far the ones that are tied to the main server up top and it's what has been uh, loaded. You can do diagnostics. This is something definitely more advanced stuff you won't necessarily need. There's your system status screen, which can you can go, you can pretty much navigate to some of the more general things here as well, like your installed readers. It'll open up that reader screen. You can navigate up here, go back to your system. Say you wanted to look at your cards, step through your cards, looking for me again, and I can navigate into my card and set different things as I need it. Uh, down here at the bottom is your event screen. If you're trying to search through things quickly, say so I'm just trying to look for uh, most of the card transactions that have happened recently, you could click on filtering the card number in ascending or descending order. You have your scroll wheel here on the side. You can look through there as well as the location if that's a little bit more helpful to what you're trying to find out. So we could group all of the Art Center South Entry doors together, the West Entry, or a lot of transactions that may have aired out someone trying to get in multiple times with a uh, card that's not active yet. Very helpful. And that is the basic layout of access it.